Hi there, I'm Bailey Carr. I'm a culinary dietitian at the Kendall Reagan Nutrition Center. Today, I'm here to show you how to make Caribbean rice and peas. To begin this recipe, we're going to chop our aromatics. There's garlic and ginger. Ginger, I'm gonna start by slicing into planks. And then I'll turn the planks into sticks. Turn the sticks into little rectangles. And then use a rocking motion to break it down. I'm gonna do the same thing with the garlic, which tends to break down just a little bit easier. It's a little bit less fibrous. Now I'm making a ginger garlic paste. I use some salt to help pull out the liquid. Or it's a bit abrasive to help break everything down and crush these small pieces. And then this effectively creates a ginger garlic paste. Sometimes it takes a few repetitions to help break down the ginger and garlic and then smooth it out and repeat. To achieve this, I'm just working in small piles. I'm working with a little bit at a time to really get it broken down into that paste. All right, that is ready to go. All right, I'm heating my pot over medium high heat. Once it is warm, I'm then going to add my oil, but it needs just a few seconds to heat up ginger garlic paste, sliced green onion, combined ingredients of coconut milk and nutmeg, water, pigeon peas, bay leaf, habanero or scotch bonnet pepper, and thyme and brown rice. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil and then allow it to heat before I add my ingredients. Oil will expand as it heats, so oftentimes you don't need as much oil as you think you do to coat the bottom of the pan. I'm going to add my aromatic ingredients. Adding that ginger garlic paste to a nice sizzle. Then my green onion. These are all very delicate, so I'm just introducing them to heat to bring the flavors out, but I don't want them to scorch or burn. So just after a quick flash, a quick exposure to that heat, I'm then going to add in my rice. And I'm going to toast the rice in this oil very quickly. Coating the rice in the oil allows for a fluffier end product with more separated grains. Once I've tossed my rice around in the oil and the aromatics, I'm going to add my liquid ingredients, the water and the coconut milk. Because brown rice is higher in fiber, it needs a little bit more cooking liquid. So I am using three parts of liquid to one part of rice. I'm going to stir it just a bit to ensure no aromatics are sticking to the bottom of the pan. Once I've added my liquid ingredients, I'm adding some more aromatics for additional flavor. This will be some thyme sprigs, two bay leaves, and a scotch bonnet or habanero pepper. Once I've added these, I will bring the pot to a rolling boil uncovered. Once it starts boiling, I'm going to cover it and reduce the heat to low to allow it to simmer. I am here checking on my rice after about 15 to 20 minutes. It is not yet done. It's going to take 45 minutes, really up to an hour of cooking. It'll always differ based off the amount of water that's uh, been let out and what temperature your stovetop is running at. I am checking it at that 15 to 20 minute mark, however, to ensure there is still liquid in the pot. I'm not taking the lid off because steam is critical for fluffy rice and I don't want to let it all escape. So I'm just looking through the lid to make sure I still see some bubbles and simmering going on. If it is too dry at this point and you look in and you just see still rice, it would be best practice to add another half cup of liquid, return the lid and allow it to continue to simmer at that low heat for the remainder of the time. There is a chance as the rice is cooking, especially with the coconut milk, that a brown crust starts to form at the bottom. 
in Caribbean cooking, this is actually a delicacy and is desired. So that is okay. We just want to pay attention to ensure that crust isn't burning. So during this process, we're also going to use the sense of smell to continue to check in and ensure there is a nice fragrant gingery smell, but not an acrid bitter burning smell. Now that the rice has completed cooking, it should be nice and tender. This is the time to remove some of the herbs and aromatics. You may need to go in with a fork and dig for them. I'm going to pull out the habanero. If you like spice, feel free to take that to a cutting board, chop it up and return it to the pot. Through the simmering process, it has lended some spice to the dish. So know that this is far away from bland. Oftentimes the thyme leaves will fall off and season the rice, but it's especially helpful to fish out the bay leaves and any stems of the thyme sprigs. Once you have fished out some of the aromatics, it's time to fold in the pigeon peas. Just going to add them directly to the pot and use a spoon to just fold them in. The combination of rice and peas makes this a complete vegetarian protein. And now the meal is ready to be served. You can serve it with some additional mango or chopped tomato to top it and they make excellent garnishes.